let me kind of go tab it on over and get back to our roadmap and tell you where we're going to go next. And that is, so modeling with Ecotech, the big thing is simple box, simple box with windows, very simple things you kind of construct there. And don't be afraid to you know, remember that sometimes, oops, hang on there. Easier to edit in Ecotech as opposed to going back to the source. Got to keep that in our file of notes, things to remember for later. Okay. In terms of working with Rhino models, let's think about that because you've been constructing some fantastic Rhino models, I hear, of some of these precedence houses. And let's take a look at like an example of one and kind of, oh, what works and what doesn't work and what we have to think about in terms of making it a good model from the standpoint of Ecotech. In fact, let me go over to Ecotech to forget and just for a second and kind of show you in terms of how it's modeling. It'll give you an idea of what we're after. Here's our lowly Ecotech model here, and you'll notice a couple things about it. See how those walls? You might notice that those walls are just single surfaces. Okay, they're not actually double surfaces, it's just a single surface. That light shell's a single surface, even the window's just a single surface. And here's what's going on. In the scheme of things, really, in terms of how things are being calculated, it really likes to ecotect in most of the analysis tools really likes to think of things just in terms of surfaces there's areas of surfaces those surfaces all have different thermal characteristics how much you can um, heat will flow through them how much they'll resist how much it'll absorb all those things and it pretty much just considers flows through the surfaces so as we go working with our model we tend to like to think of things as just being surfaces now, if you have a very detailed model that has two sides to a wall, we actually have to play a little bit of a game in that we even have to say that one side of the surface just doesn't exist if we want to do a thermal analysis or kind of sort of uh, break the thermal properties so that we split them between the two different surfaces so you don't get double penalized. Now, that sounds a little abstract right now, but we'll demonstrate that in terms of showing you how that works. So the important thing for you to think about relative to this is that for the most part, it likes simple surfaces. And then even in terms of working with this model, you'll see my windows are pretty, uh, well, they're, let's just say they're a little primitive in the way they're modeled right now. I'm not showing a lot of mullions. I'm not showing a lot of uh, kind of framing features. Truth is, for these kinds of models, those types of features really don't add a lot in terms of the thermal analysis. Okay, that little bit of space that's blocked by the mullions really compared to the overall uh, transmittance through the glass or the transmittance to the wall doesn't add up to a whole lot. Some things matter though. Things like mullions and frames and things like that do count from a sort of shading standpoint, so they do affect the daylighting analysis. That's why that light shade, even though it's a single surface, is one I want to capture in there. But kind of keep your eye on this notion that we're really going to keep on trying to simplify our models. So for the purpose of doing the analysis, you don't necessarily want the most detailed model. If there's too many things going on, we might actually have to kind of hide some or take out some of the detail. Okay, so watch out for that one. But given that, let's go over to Rhino and kind of take a look at a model and think about what we might need to do. Okay, so we will go ahead and actually before I do that, let me just kind of you know pause for a second here. You know, from your guys' perspective, so Simon, like any questions in, in the room in terms of things we want to like uh, answer right away, or should we just dive over into Rhino? Okay, nothing coming yet. I'm going to assume... Let's get going. Okay, we'll keep... Oh, there we go. I, I probably made you jump up from your seat on the other side of the room, and now you're back up at the keyboard. All good from that side. Fantastic. Okay, sounds good. Let's go over to Rhino and kind of like a look at what the model might look like on that side. Okay, as we're working with Rhino models, there's a couple big major steps we have to work with. We have to sort of prepare the model, get it ready to come on over. Then we have to export the model and then finally import it into Ecotech. And the big thing that we like to have in terms of preparing is if, you know, if it's a shading model, if we're really looking at it in terms of the shadows, the shading, and the solar radiation, it turns out that's relatively forgiving. You know, looking at those things, just any surfaces, even double surfaces, are okay for that. So let's say, I'll say single surfaces for thermal analysis. 
Yeah, double surfers are actually okay for uh, the whole notion of shading and solar radiation. Because uh, it doesn't really matter if there's two surfaces. The first one is the one that's going to measure the, uh, the shading, or we'll do the shading or catch the solar radiation. So we're going to start by just basically preparing our model. Then we're going to export it. And let's think about how we are going to export it. It's really going to come down to this notion of really bringing it across as a DXF file. And as we bring things all across as a DXF file, we're going to really want to make sure that all the different surfaces, no matter how we've modeled them, all are sort of exported as a series of meshes. So if you uh, have them as a series of NURBs, or you have them as surfaces, um, we're going to really reduce it all to meshes as part of the DXF, DXF export. Okay? And that will allow us to bring it into Ecotext very cleanly. So let me kind of show you what that means relative to a model that Simon was good enough to provide. So let's go over to Rhino and take a look. Okay, we have a model here which might be similar to a model that you're working on. This is of Ito's uh, U-House. Okay, and in terms of like what it looks like right now, let's just kind of take a look at this model and I'll sort of take a look at it from the standpoint of what's good about this model and what's not so good about the model as we get going with the whole thing. Let me even go ahead and, uh, oh, what did I do? I right clicked on that. I'm just going to orbit around a little bit. Oh, what did I do there? Da, da, da. Now, for all you Rhino buffs there, I will be the first to admit I am a very bad Rhino user. I spend most of my time modeling in Revit, okay, which is sort of what I use an awful lot for my BIM modeling. So you guys, when it comes to Rhino, will I kind of just model me right under the table? And that's okay. I'm not going to worry about it too much. But as we go looking at this model, there's a couple sort of interesting things I noticed about it. One is, this is actually already set up to be like a 2D, or uh, most of the walls actually have two surfaces to them. It has an interior and an interior, exterior surface. Can okay, that's okay. We can deal with that. That wouldn't be too awfully bad in terms of bringing things across. There are some funny things, though, about the model that may cause a little bit of trouble later. You can sort of see down here, it doesn't look too bad. It's got this kind of nice uh, sloping roof that's coming all around. There are a couple of what I'll call holes in the model, though, and that might create a little bit of trouble later. For example, there's a little hole in the roof right here. Okay, And there's also, at least in this model, above the wall, it looks like there's like a little band of glass or something where it's letting light in. I'm not really very familiar with this house, but there's something going in. You can also see it happening over here. It's a little bit of a hole between there, and I'm not sure if that's actually in the real house closed in with glass or if that's all. Okay, beautiful. So it's a skylight there. Excellent. You know, here's what we're going to need to do for all those different surfaces. If they are kind of like uh, either openings, whatever we need to do there. You know, from the purpose of daylighting, okay, that can be open because if it's a skylight and is essentially clear, that'll be super. You know, from a thermal standpoint, though, we'll have to watch out that even if those uh, you know are like holes that are ultimately covered with glass, we just need to kind of get them covered. And I think this one actually here. It's, I'm not sure if it's the way it's rendering for me in Rhino, but actually when I went through and bring it into like uh, Ecotext, you'll see there actually is something in here, although it's modeled kind of like a tube. But we'll see. Let's get, let me go ahead and show you what happens with the model when we get this on out. So I'm not going to change the model very much right now. I'm just sort of leave it like this and show you what happens when we export it like this and bring it on over. So here's basically how it works. You're going to go ahead and take this model and we're going to go through and select it okay and we're going to say export it so far so good we will then come on down and we will say that we want to export it as a dxf file i'll find it right there okay so it could be dwg but dxf seems to work better Go ahead and give it a name somewhere. I'm just going to put it on my desktop for right now. I'll call this my Ito House Export 1.
we're going to get to the part where it's really uh, we have the option of specifying some different things about how things are exported. And this is where we actually want to go through and make a small change because rather than depending on just sort of the fault, I really want to make sure that the surfaces are coming as meshes and meshes are coming as meshes. So I want to make sure that's going to happen. So to do that, I'm going to set up a new schema and make sure that happens. So I'm going to say edit the schemas and I'll go through and create a new one. I'll call this oh, export to Ecotect. So surfaces, I don't want curves. I want them to be meshes. Meshes can come as meshes too. And I'll leave it our, our, our AutoCAD 2014, 2004. It'll be fine. Let me save that away. Okay. Having saved that schema, that'll be easy to choose next time we have to go through and do uh, some sort of uh, export of this. So we are ready to export. I'll say OK. Here's this choice about as we go through and take this surface, how is it going to go to break it down into a mesh? And here's what's going to happen. All those big old flat surfaces, they're going to be fine. Those flat surfaces will give no trouble whatsoever. Those rounded surfaces you're going to find, though, create a lot of triangulated meshes. And here's this issue of really, do we want to have more or fewer? Just how fine do we want that to be? In general, the recommendations kind of leave it set to the default, but if you end up with a bazillion, an awful lot of polygons, you might go ahead and turn it down to fewer polygons. Okay, If it's a little bit too rough and you really need the fineness, you might turn it up. But here's my general guidance. As you go through and bring things into Ecotect, the more like curves especially, the more facets, the more sides you have to that curve, just the harder it is. It's, it takes longer to go through and do all the calculations. So in general, simpler is better. You know, for what we're doing, it probably won't really matter whether that looks like a truly smooth rounded curve or is a faceted one that has a lot of individual pieces. So, you know, don't be afraid to kind of like simplify. That'll just make your life a little bit easier in terms of what's going on. We'll say OK there. Actually, I should comment. Another thing we should do over here is there's this whole notion over on the side of really what layers we want to turn on, which layers we want to turn off. I went through and actually turned off a bunch of layers in this model. In this model, um, I turned off the interior furnishings, the kitchen partitions, some things like that. You really only want to get the layers that contain information that is necessary kind of for the uh, analytical model. So go ahead and simplify again if you can. That's just fewer things. It'll be a little bit less confusing on the backside when you go through and do the analysis. So go ahead and turn off whatever layers just over in the layer palette. Yeah, kind of turn things on or off. Actually, I'm already in this, so let me kind of uh, continue, and then I'll show you how that works. Say OK. It saved it away. So again, what I would do is if I wanted to get rid of some things, I would try turning on and off different layers and just sort of seeing how things are organized. Now, layering is going to be your friend. So hopefully, as you've built your model, you're thinking about layering and using it very wisely to help organize all your data. Because uh, when we go through and bring all those surfaces in, it really helps to have a way of classifying them all so we can kind of manipulate them a little bit better. Okay, so that's all we really need to do on the eco or on the uh, rhino side. Okay, get things straightened out. Make sure you have closed surfaces and reduce as much information as you can from the model. Then again, say file, export it. Because I should select it so I can do that. Then again, we'll just sort of choose whatever we want to put in there. I'll say that's going to be oh, eto export do. I haven't changed anything. I just want to show you the dialog again. Say export to Ecotect, and then finally leave the number of polygons or set to the default unless you want to simplify it a little bit. Say OK to all that. I'm going to cancel since we've already exported it once. Okay, that's enough with what's going on in Rhino right now. Let me show you what happens when you actually bring that thing over into Ecotect. So when I close up Ecotect, so I've exported, customize that. What we're now going to do is import the model. And when we import the model, we're going to do something like this. We're going to say that we're going to import some 3D CAD geometry. And there's going to be a couple of things we're going to do to really make sure that it comes in cleanly. One thing is, if there happen to be duplicate faces, so two different surfaces that are meshing right on top of each other, just remove one of them so that we don't have two surfaces that are hiding on top of each other and we'll just confuse things by doubling up the properties of that surface. 
Okay. Another thing that we're going to try and do is, whenever possible, auto-merge triangles. So if we have two triangular surfaces on the mesh and they have to be coplanar, that'll like uh, merge them into a bigger surface so we don't have as many individual surfaces to work with. I also have to pay attention to the scale, make sure our scale is about right. Then we're going to think about really how layers play into materials and how we can go through and use that to uh, set our thermal properties. So let's go ahead and kind of show you how that all works. Okay, so I'm going to go over to Ecotect. And I'm going to say that, hey, we're starting with a brand new clean model. Okay, not much going on here. Looking like just a big blank workspace, a big grid for us to work with. And let us show you how you import these things. So it starts with going to the file menu and saying import. And then under the file menu, we'll say that we want to import its 3D CAD geometry. Okay, it's assuming the DXF format, probably because that was the last one I was practicing with. Let me choose the file. And I will go on out, and I'm going to go to the Dropbox where I actually put some of these things. Oh, EcoTest model imports. Actually, I can go to the desktop if I was really being honest because that's where I just saved that last one. But I actually had saved a few before we got started with class. Um, I'm going to say that I'm going to do uh, DXF export. Eto export was right there. I'll say open to that one. Okay, and let's talk a little about how it's all coming on in there. Okay, what we now have is, okay, these are all the different layers that came through. You'll see there's a number of different faces. You see like 3D walls actually has 480 faces. Outside wall actually has 4821 faces, 4,800 of them. So there's an awful lot of them there. We do want to go through and auto merge the triangles. So make sure these are the two checkboxes. You got to make sure you get remove duplicate faces and auto merge the triangles. And then also just make sure that your scaling is right. You know, if you've been working in millimeters, and I think that model is in millimeters, make sure it's going millimeters to millimeters. But change it if it needs to be. I usually work in feet and translate that way. Or inches. Say so, okay. We got those things. Now let's talk about this whole notion of zones and stuff like that. Zones can be a very useful thing because zones in a lot of ways can match your layering and zones can be useful to you as we're going through and assigning things. If you could turn on and off different layers by using the zone variable to do that, that's useful to you because then you can like uh, turn off things and grab all the objects that belong to a specific layer and change their properties. So to do that, what I would do is I'd grab all the zones or grab all these items and I'd say zone, and I can say, let me assign it based on, and I'm going to base it on the item name. The item name means that it's going to go through and grab the you know, name that came in as the layer name and give that the zone name. So it'll map those two things together. That'll again make it just a little bit easier to select these things. As far as the materials, let's take a look at that. Walls, looks like it's guessing it's some sort of wall. We can say that let it be the default wall, or we could actually assign a material. We'll do that in a little bit. We'll just let it know that that is indeed a wall surface. Floor slabs were guessed to be a floor. Glazing, hmm, didn't really guess anything there. So what we're going to do is for glazing, say anything that comes in on the layer glazing is going to be set as a window. A lofted wall. I think that's a wall, but we'll see that, yeah. I think that's the rounded wall at the end, at the head of the house. Outside wall also coming in as walls. Okay, now here's a kind of a nice important oh, thing you can do to save yourself some time. If you've gone through it in your model, you have a whole lot of layers set up, all these different layers of things, and you've spent some time mapping in the zones and you've mapped in the materials. Okay, rather than having to go back here and set those every single time, it might be very handy to go ahead and save these settings away, and you can do that. So this thing, this is all called a material translation list, can be saved. And to do that, what you'll do is you click the Save button, which is down here in the dialog. And we can go ahead and give it a name, like the Ito Import Translation List. I'll give it two, since that's uh, the latest one that I just made. Save that away. 
And the nice thing is now, if I bring this model back in again, I can load that translation list, okay, and have all these this table of settings kind of automatically applied. So that's just a little time saver. So again, what I'm saving away is this mapping between the layer names, the material, and what zone it should be applied to. But in any case, when you get done with this dialogue and you have all this stuff set up, here's what you got to do, okay? To make sure those are checked, that. We're set up over here. Let's say open it as a new one or import into existing. I don't really have much going on here, so I can just import it. And I'll get something that looks like this. Now it's still working. Notice all those triangulated surfaces? Aha! Okay, it did a little bit better there. It went through and uh, reduced all that triangulation that was happening in this surface to, uh, what is it? Uh, make it like a, just a single plane instead. Let me kind of show you that again one more time. So these big old planar surfaces that are out here. Let me again do the import so you can sort of see that. We'll import the 3D CAD data. I'll choose that file. Here he is. Say OK. This time, since I've already uh, saved that material translation file, I can just go through. I'll make sure that's millimeters. Say load it. Load that last one. And I'll say open it as a new one. Don't save those changes. Okay, it'll come back in and watch it. It goes by quickly. Well, that didn't go by very quickly. Not to worry. Let's open that again. I can't hear you laughing, but hopefully that's striking you as funny. Okay, let's go back to Ecotech Analysis. I guess the point of that would be, remember to save often. Again, we'll try to use that as an object lesson to say, oh, look, you know, save early, save often. Never say, never go longer than you'd care to lose your work between saves, just to be on the, on the safe side. <laughs> Very good. Well, oh, the voice of Simon, that's even better. Okay, we'll say like this, we'll import that, I'll again load, bring that translation list in there, let me import it into the existing. Okay, and it all just goes by so quickly, you hardly ever see. But what happens is those triangulated surfaces become flat surfaces. Now, as we go around here, you will notice some things don't disappear. For example, that rounded wall, see all the triangulations kind of happening in there. Um, actually, Simon, you'll probably know. I believe that wall is, it's, it's kind of curved and lofted. Is it that, that back wall has some funny shape to it? There's something going on about that that's causing it in terms of the way it's modeled here to uh, like uh, give it. It looks like it has a little bit of curvature. I think that's why it got lofted. I'm seeing like a little bend in there. But, you know, I think that's why that surface is staying so complex. If it were more of a cylinder, just a vertical things, Oh, well, that could have been too. <laughs> like, but you'll find that for the purpose of what we're modeling, yeah, it might be good to simplify some of that so we're not looking at all that detail in terms of what's going on. But you bring in this model, and here it is, and there's a lot of surfaces in here. We can go through and say visualize and even sort of see things. Oh, let me pop back out here. And, oh, let me orbit around a little bit and see what this looks like. Actually, pan it first. And you'll see, oh, there's that skylight. So that one's kind of there. We have these windows. That's kind of looking pretty good in terms of what's happening there. I'm zooming funny. Let me get a zoom out like this without kind of rescaling the whole thing. Let me walk out. OK, now if I orbit this around. You'll see there's that little funny hole. That's the one I'm a little bit worried about. Again, that little hole right there, it's not going to matter a whole lot from the standpoint of uh, shading, but it will matter in terms of thermal analysis. We'll have to kind of close that hole. Okay. So let me just kind of demonstrate another way to get at this. The big thing in terms of Rhino and bringing things across from Rhino is you really just got to kind of simplify that model as best you can. So even a lot of little things like 
oh, these little ribs that are kind of happening in here, which are actually part of the architectural model, really aren't critical from the standpoint of the energy model. So from the standpoint of what we're doing, you know, you may or may not want to go through and include those things. You know, it's, it's good as part of the architectural model. Um, it won't hurt anything. You know, when we go through and we cast shadows or we do different things, you know, those things should be okay, and that should all read just fine. But again, when it gets to energy modeling, it may be a little more problematic. For example, let me cast shadows with this thing. Orbit that a little. And I'll just try doing something where we'll look at the shadows through the day. And you see the windows and everything. They're reading okay. Okay. We'll talk about that shadows and how to do that stuff yeah, more in just a little bit when we talk about shadows in more detail. Okay. Another model, I'm just going to show you another way to do this. Just since, yeah, I spend most of my time actually working in Revit, another modeling tool, but let me kind of show you what that would look like over there. Because it's just the other way you might come into Ecotech sometime. Um, in preparing for the class, I just went through and just uh, basically made the same model or made a very similar model um, using Revit. And I just want to show you that as an alternate path. So if you ever come from another environment, you know there's another way to do this. If we're coming from Revit, and again, there's all sorts of stuff we can talk about in terms of working with Revit, but I think where you're working with Rhino is great for what you're doing for this assignment. If we're coming from a Revit model, it's a slightly different format because there's something actually called GBXML, which is a great file format. It's a green building XML. I kind of just take you down that. We can export that way and we can import GBXML. And the nice thing about GBXML is it tends to actually be what do I look at, a little higher fidelity than D DXF. Actually, one nice thing about it is that it actually goes through and uh, transmit thermal data too as part of what it's doing. So let's see if that's going to open itself up. It looks like it's trying. Okay. So here's just another model of the house. This is uh, just a model, you know, very similar. Again, I don't have all the nuance. This is kind of a very simple sort of surface model. Probably missing all sorts of things that you folks who have been studying this house know about. But it was what I sort of got from just kind of looking at that other model what it might look like. So in this sort of environment, again, it's this whole notion of make a closed surface. It has a roof, it has a floor, it has all those different kind of elements to it. And then what happens in the Revit world is rather than exporting DXF, we export something called GBXML. So what is that? That's green building XML. So it has surface data, but it also has the issue of uh, it stores thermal data about all the different surfaces. So you can transfer that across, and then you don't have to put it back in on the Ecotech side. You'll see in this view actually how it translates things. It's taking that 3D model, and it's translating it into a whole series of simple surfaces. And when you say that you want to export this, and I'll go back to uh, the desktop again. Okay, so we can take that model and bring it over to Ecotech too. What happens with that model? Let me go back over to Ecotech. You can see it looks amazingly similar. So this guy over here is the Rhino version. It's got the various little chunks of triangulation and stuff like that. Let me go back in and bring in now the Revit model, and that would be under when we're coming from Revit, we don't say 3D geometry, we say we're going to bring in a GBXML model. And then if I go out to the desktop and grab that guy, I have to change it over to XML, so I'll see it. Okay, once again, we have sort of this dialogue where we do a little bit of mapping. For this mapping, the idea is we have all these different wall types and different doors and windows, things like that. We also have the issue of the zones and how that's all mapped together. Now, if you bring it in as GBXML, we have a little more control over the different objects. Although, yeah, we can do it in there. So I tend to leave it all as one zone there, but if we want to, you can go ahead and say by object name. Okay. 
Next we'll go ahead and for the materials, again like this fixed thing here, it looks like a fixed door, or that's a fixed window actually. We might need to tell if that's a window. Okay. But I have gone through and saved these, so let me just load in kind of the uh, model for format there. I had a materials translation list that I'd already created. That's the easiest way to say that. Okay, now I will import this into a, as a new model. Okay. And you'll see it's actually kind of similar. This has a little less triangulation to it. So if you have something that you can bring in that way, super. Yeah, if you don't, that's okay too. We can go ahead and kind of clean up. The triangulation is really not going to bother things. It'll just slow things down a little bit in terms of bringing it on in there. Okay, so um, let's just kind of uh, pause there for a second because there's this whole issue about bringing things in from Rhino, bringing them from different environments. Let me go ahead and bring that Rhino one back in and we'll talk about some of the things we have to do to kind of clean things up. So let me kind of, yeah, pause for a second and just kind of see how you guys are doing as far as, you know, for questions, things that we want to see before we kind of move uh, into more playing in Ecotech. I'm not seeing any typing now, so I'm not sure if that's because I sort of how I'm hiding it. Oh, there we go. Is it worthwhile bringing in simplified run rather than a complete one? We'll be building detailed models for the assignment. Okay. For here's what I'd recommend doing is if we're going to go through and like you know, bring in the more detailed model. Is really I think the key then is you know really making sure that we're organizing information like uh, in the layers so we can go through and control things and determine what we want to kind of consider for the different types of analysis. Let me, you know, that sounded like a very vague thing. Let me kind of make that r more real in terms of, let me say I'm going to import that 3D CAD geometry. Actually, let me do this. Let me go through and I'm going to open up one that I had already saved. That's out there. That kind of has the basic import in there and kind of show you what I mean. Okay, so I'm going to go out to it's again in this, the data sets that are out there for you. Uh, model files, Ecotech, model files, Rhino. Oh, I'll go over to Ecotech. Well, that's interesting. Did I never save that one away? Maybe I didn't. No worries. Okay, let me say uh, new and I'll import that thing again. Save changes, no. I'll import, and we'll go back in and bring in that guy. I'm going to go out to the Dropbox. If I remember to get to the right one. Model files, I'm going to find it where I did them in just a second. Export, oh, there's DXF export, there it is. Okay, so I'll say open as new. Got it. Oh, let me load that in again. Okay, and watch the triangulation go away. Okay, here's the deal. It is okay to go ahead and bring in to go through and like uh, yeah bring all that stuff in and it really it doesn't affect things a whole lot and especially a lot of what I'm talking about now especially for the solar radiation analysis really isn't nearly as critical as for the thermal but here's where it starts to uh, you know how you can start to control that a little bit when we brought things in you'll remember that we mapped sort of from layers into different zones so what we can do is actually over here in the properties palette there's different settings there's kind of things about the selection. There's this thing about zones too. So here are all the different zones. This will look an awful lot like the layer manager. It doesn't run out. So in here we can do this whole thing of turning things on and turning things off. Okay. And as long as we have the ability to go ahead and turn things on and turn things off to kind of select things easily, I think it's okay to have the uh, the the, uh, the complexity there. The biggest difference that the complexity is going to make it won't change your analytical result very much. 
um, it'll just sort of slow things down a little bit because when you do analyses, the more surfaces and the more unique oblique angles, the, the more time it just takes to do that. So, you know, it's, it's really sort of an issue of slowness. So if you already have the detailed model, I say super, bring it on in there. And what we can think about is just organizing in layers to, to kind of filter out layers of complexity that you don't necessarily need for the purpose of the analysis. Exactly. I think that's a good way to characterize it, Simon. I think that if you go through and you organize the zones nicely, the cool thing is we can turn off different zones. Yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and turn off that lofted wall for whatever purpose, if that's an interior wall. <laughs> no worries. My typing gets even worse when I like uh, or have uh, hundreds of people watching. That's, yes, exactly. Guaranteed to be the worst time ever. Okay, if you don't need to be considering a certain type of wall for that type of analysis, just turn it off. Okay, and then it won't be considered at that point. So, or you get the choice of whether it's going to be considered. So, I think, yeah, the big thing is really uh, making sure you're organizing yourself very carefully into layers so you can have your complexity when you like it and hide your complexity when it's working against you. So, I think that's a good general guideline.